Hey guys, who's ready to wrap up that whack-a-mole game we started creating a few weeks back? I know I am. So in this video, we're going to wrap that up with part three of our three-part series. Alright guys, so the first thing you need to do is open up your completed project from part two. Now if you didn't do the part two tutorial, there's a number of ways in which you can catch up in the description below. The easiest way would be to do the tutorial itself. Now that wouldn't be the easiest way. It'd probably be the best way, but not the easiest. The easiest way would be remix the project that I have listed below. So when we left, we had our hammer whacking the mole, no problem, and we were tallying scores. So now what we're gonna do is polish up the game with the three-stage concept. Again, there's a link below to a video that explains that concept. But in short, it's three stages, a splash screen. The only thing that has to be on that splash screen is a start button. That start button will start the game. Then there's the second stage, which is the game itself. That game will play until it's over. In this case, this game will last 60 seconds. You need to hit the cat as many times as you can within 60 seconds. When 60 seconds is over, it will bring us to our third stage, which is the game over stage. So, let's go and make that happen. All right, people, welcome to Scratch Town once again. So, I have opened up my whack a cat project from part two so this is exactly where we left off I saved it as a copy and renamed it whack a cat final so now I have a backup of part two so this is a three stage concept so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, get the th resources we need so we need three stages and we're gonna need a start button so the first thing I'm gonna do lower left hand corner is the stage I'm gonna click on it I'm gonna click on backdrops you can see that we have only one and I need three so we're going to name these things appropriately the first backdrop is going to be our start backdrop so I'm going to name it start and here just to save time all I'm going to put in is the name of the game whack hyphen uh, hyphen cat now when all is said and done, you can put as many graphics and make this look as pretty as you want. This will be the screen that the user will see at the very beginning of the game. I'm going to make it nice and big. Okay, there's one stage. Our second stage is going to be the game stage. So I'm going to hit my paintbrush. I'm going to call this stage game, G-A-M-E. Okay, so to save some time, I'm going to do this quick and fast, but you can make it look like anything you want. I'm going to use the paintbrush tool. I'm going to paint a line right across the whole stage. Then I'm going to use my fill tool, fill the bottom, and take a blue, fill the top. Now I'm going to create my third stage. I'm going to once again hit the paintbrush, and this is going to be the end stage, E N D. And again, to save some time, I'm just going to use the text tool and type in Game Over. G-A-M-E-O-V-E-R, Game Over. Make it bigger. Okay, so now we have our three stages. So the next resource we need is a Start button. And that's going to be a new sprite. So down underneath your work area where it says New Sprite, we're going to click the second icon, that paintbrush, click. And now we're going to make a start button. So I'm going to use the oval tool. I'm going to make it black and filled. I'm going to draw an oval. Then I'm going to use my text tool. I'm going to pick a light color. Type in start. You could type in play or go. Whatever makes your point. S-T-A-R-T. Now I'm going to click away. And now you have one opportunity to move it and resize it. And once again, it's not a big deal if you mess up. All you have to do is undo and start again. Okay. 
Okay, so now we have some of the resources we need. So in order to make this happen, broadcasting is going to play a big role. So before we go any further, let me play you a little segment from a prior video that explains broadcasting. I'll see you in a minute. Buttons broadcast events. So when a button is pressed, something's going to happen. And in order for that to happen, we need to use a broadcast command. The broadcast command allows one script to talk to another. So now that we know what broadcasting is, let's wrap up this game. In computer programming, most things are event driven. So we're going to deal with three events. The first event is going to be the flag click. That's going to bring the opening screen. The second event is going to be the start button, which is going to start the game. And the third event is going to be the end of the game, which will be the timer that will click down 60 seconds. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is program the start button with these events in mind. So when I go to start, I'm on the start button. I know I'm on the start button because I have the blue ring around it. And I'm going to go to scripts. Now the first event is a flag click. So let's deal with that. So what do we want to happen to the start button when the flag is clicked? We simply want to see it. So I'm going to go to looks and we're going to show. Now the second event is the actual clicking on the start button and making it a button. And to make that happen, again, we go to events and we're going to use the when this sprite clicked. Now when this sprite is clicked, we want two things to happen. We want the game to begin and the start button to disappear. So for the game to begin, we're going to broadcast not new message, but start. S-T-A-R-T. And all the other sprites are going to receive this and begin the game. Hit OK. Second thing we want to happen is for it to disappear. So I'm going to go to looks and hide. And now our stop button is programmed. The only thing we'll have to do is place it on the screen where we want to see it, but we could do that later. So now let's go to our stage and start to program that. Once again, there are three events. The first event, so let's go to events. The first event is the flag click. The second event is receiving start. And the third event is receiving end. Now we haven't sent end yet, so I'm going to, from the drop down, make a new message end now all we want to do with these events is switch the backdrops so that's under looks so when the flag click is clicked we want to switch to backdrop start once the game has begun we want to switch to backdrop game and when the game is over we want to switch to backdrop end so while we're on the stage why don't we program our timer and in order to do this we need to create a variable so go to data we already have our score that's the variable holding the points well now we're going to create another variable and this is going to be called time left so I go to make a variable and type in time t-i-m-e left l-e-f-t for all sprites, of course, and hit OK. Now that we have our variable time left, we got to program it. What do we want the time left to be at the very beginning of the game before it starts? Well, if our game is going to take 60 seconds, we're going to set the time left to 60. Now, when do we want to start counting down the timer? Not when the flag is clicked, we want to start counting down the timer when the game starts so we're going to add to the when I receive start event and what we want to do is take away one every second until we get down to zero so we're going to repeat under control 
not 10 times, but 60 times. And what do we want to do 60 times on the data? We want to change the time left by not one, but negative one. Now we don't want this to happen immediately. We want each change to take a second. So go back to control and we're going to wait a second in between subtracting one. Now, once we have done this 60 times, time left will equal zero, at which point we want to go to events, broadcast, and let's go to our hammer. Now our hammer is all set up, except we haven't programmed for the events. So the first thing we're going to do is when the flag is clicked, we want it to be hidden. We don't want to see the hammer until the game actually begins to be played. So I'm going to go to my looks and I'm going to grab the hide command. Now I'm going to stick that hide command underneath any flag click. So all this will be working, but without the hammer in view, nothing's going to happen. Once again, under events, when the game begins, when the hammer receives start, we want to see it, show it. And under events, when the hammer receives end, we want not to see it or we want it to hide. So we want this exact same thing to happen to each one of the cat sprites. So we have to make those same three changes, hide, show, hide. So I go to the cat, I'm going to hide under a flag click, go to events. I got two events, when we receive start and when we receive end. When we receive start, we want to show it. And when we receive end, we want to hide it. All right, so we need to do the same thing we just did to that first cat to all of the cats. So I'm going to show you a little shortcut. I'm going to take this start script that I have here. I'm just going to slide it into cat two, slide it into cat three, slide it into cat four, slide it into cat five. Then I'm going to take the end script that we created and do the same thing. Cat two, cat three, cat four, and cat five. So now if I look at cat two, you can see that I've added those two scripts and all I need to do is insert a hide. Go to cat three, same thing. So go ahead, get all five or whatever, however many cats you have to have these three changes in it. I'll do the same and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I made those three changes to all five of my cat sprites and I'm assuming you've done the same. We basically have our game complete. We just need to do a few things to polish it up. The first thing I'm going to do is move my time left variable to the right side of the screen. I just like the symmetry. I think it looks better that way. Now I'm going to go into my stage. Now we don't want to see the score or the time left until the game begins. So when the flag click event happens, I'm going to use this hide variable block to hide both the variables. So that I'm going to hide time left and I'm going to hide the score. Now we hide the score until the game begins. And then of course I want to see the score. So the game begins when the start event happens. So under when I receive start, I'm going to show both those variables, time left, and I'm going to show score. And the last thing I'm going to do to complete my game is once the game is over, right after broadcast end, I want the whole game to stop. So under control, down towards the bottom, there's a stop all command. So when the game is over, everything's going to stop. Okay, so our game should be complete. We need to test it to find out. So first thing I'm going to do is hit the flag. So this is our splash screen. I know it's plain and drab, but you could make this look as pretty and colorful with graphics as you want, just not taking time in this video. 
When I click the second event, which is the start button, our game should begin. So I click and our game has begun. Now our game will go through 60 seconds. And three, two, one, zero, game over. And this is our final screen. So once again, you can personalize these backdrops to look like how you want them to look with color and graphics. Take your time, make them look great, but the function of the game is complete. So once again, guys, like what you like, subscribe if you haven't, and as always, we'll see you next time.